Good to see each one this morning. It's good to be back with you again. Uh, I tell you, I'm going to be on my best behavior. I was reading in the bulletin there where you're going to have a fall shoot. I don't want to get anybody too upset. But frankly, I don't know you all very well. I'm not here to condemn. I know Lonnie and Eva back there, and I know where they stand. Anybody that passed their house during the Easter season knew where they stood. There was a great big sign out there in the yard that said Jesus. And that impressed me, and I'm going to uh, maybe have one myself one of these days to put up. Although we don't get the traffic back off the road like they do, I'm sure that it will have the effect that God wants it to have. And that's what I pray about my preaching. Like I say, I'm not here to condemn and to criticize, but I am here to try and preach the word this morning. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will just touch your hearts this morning and teach, touch my heart also. When I preach, God speaks to me and tells me sometimes what I need to do in order to be more pleasing to him. And when God's word goes forth, it accomplishes the things that he intends for it to accomplish. And that's a big load off of my shoulders. If I preach the word, the rest is in his hands. So you pray for me that I would be faithful in preaching the word that God's will would be accomplished here this morning. Uh, I want to read perhaps a very familiar text to you this morning. It's found in chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. Chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. And I want to begin reading there verse 15. Paul is writing to Timothy and he says here in verse 15, he reminds Paul, or Timothy, that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God or person of God may be perfect, complete, mature, thoroughly furnished into all good works. And I also just want to point out what Paul said there in uh, verse 15. Of of the second chapter. Study to show thyself approval unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I want to emphasize rightly dividing the word of truth. It's our responsibility to work out our own salvation. I'm not going to answer for you when I stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and you're not going to answer for me. What we do with the Lord Jesus Christ is our personal responsibility. And we as Christians today need to understand that God has instructed us in His Word to study it and to learn it and to uh, apply it. The Apostle Paul reminds Timothy there in the first chapter that from a child, from a child, the Holy Scriptures had been bought uh, taught to him, and according to chapter 1, verse 5, his grandmother, Lois, and his mother, Eunice, taught him as a child. And I can relate to that. My grandmother, when I was probably three or four years old, <laughs> would teach me Bible stories. And uh, I remember her teaching about Gideon and, uh, of course, David, killing the giant, Jonah and the whale. But most of all, I remember her teaching about Jesus uh, leaving uh, 
Israel and fleeing into uh, Jerusalem or Egypt. And uh, she had a picture in the front of her Bible that many old Bibles have. And uh, I remember it, and I can just see it just as plain today. Of Jesus sitting on, and his mother sitting on a, a donkey, and Joseph had the reins, and they were going, I uh, assume, to Egypt. And those things stayed with me. Now, a lot of it didn't, of course, but mainly that picture has always been in my mind, and how important it is that our young people learn at a, a, a very young age about God's Word. I impressed with the children's story this morning. Why was I impressed? Because I, I learned from it. I learned from the children's story, and you do too, if you want to be honest about it. You learn. We all learn. We never should stop learning. That's something that God uh, wants us to be, mature, complete in our spiritual growth. And one of the reasons we learn from the children's story, and we all do, but it's simple, easy for a child to understand. And that was a lesson for all of us to learn, especially us preachers. We need to be reminded of KISS, K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. Not everybody uh, understands uh, what we're saying if they're not familiar or, uh, or grown up in the church. A lot of people come into the church for the first time. They hear you talking like thee and thou, and, uh, and maybe we <laughs> read the scripture, and instead of cow, we say climb. You know, we have to understand that there's a lot of people out here in our world today that have very little knowledge about God's Word. And sad to say, there's very many Christians out here today that have very little knowledge about God's Word. Now, I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying this morning and you can hear me. I have hearing aids, my hearing shot, and sometimes I may get too loud or too soft. You let me know if you can't hear me, raise your hand or something and tell me. Uh, I want you to hear me. I don't want to be too loud, but at the same time, I want you to understand what God has to say through His Word this morning. The, the importance of knowing God's Word. I'm reminded of a story that when I was probably a teenager that was going around in the churches about this old feller. It seemed like everything was happening to him. I mean, he had all kinds of problems. I mean, you name it, and it probably uh, was something he had to experience. Death in the family, sickness, uh, crops failing, all these things was hitting him and seemed like all the time. Yet that man was joyful and optimistic and people just couldn't understand it. And they said, how can you be like this with all these things happening to you? He said, well, he said, I read my Bible. He said, I read in there several times where it says it came to pass, but I never read where it came to stay. Do you understand what he was doing? He was using the Bible and applying it to his everyday life. And that's why it's so important for us to understand the scriptures, to know the word, so that we can apply it to circumstances in our life every day. And believe me, out in this world today, we run into everything you can think of and some of the things you can't think of and would never have thought of until it happens. People are ignorant about the Word of God. They have the wrong attitude about Christianity. People are hating Christians in this world today. In this country, they hate Christians for no reason other than that they don't understand what Christianity is all about. And that's our responsibility. My responsibility, your responsibility to witness to them what Christ is all about in your life. And, and when we stop and think about it, 
Our Bible is the most precious book that we own. Think about this. When you pick up your Bible, have you ever thought about how precious this word is and how God has preserved it down through the years, down through the years, for our use? You know, there's a few young people here this morning and I don't want to get ahead of them, but I'm talking about how God preserved it using many hands, by the way, to keep his word, even though the devil was doing everything he could to destroy God's word. And someone said B-I-B-L-E stands for uh, basic instructions before leaving earth, and how true that is. Do we understand the sacrifices that were made by people down in history so that we could have the word today. The word ready available. Look in the back of your pew, there's a Bible. Look in a motel room, or a hotel room, or in a hospital, dresser drawer maybe. You'll find a Bible that the Giddings is placed there. And by the way, I don't know whether there's any Giddings here or not, but that is one organization that I have a high respect for. They pay their own administration costs and they use every dollar that we give to support them to buy Bibles, to distribute all over the world. A wonderful organization. There are others out there, but some of them are not so reliable, and some of them have high administration costs, and we don't know where the money's going. That's why I urge churches to uh, be sure you know who you're supporting. Because the money that we go out there needs to be doing what God, God, the Lord's work and not going in somebody's pocket. There needs to be accountability. And the money you put in that plate this morning, there is accountability. Keep that in mind. I'm not going to preach on money or tithes this morning, but I just wanted to bring that up. That's a little extra there, just a good news nugget or whatever you want to call it. But we who support God's work and take care of God's people's needs, he will take care of our needs. I found that out to be so true in life. But think about this, this Bible that we have today. Now we're talking about before, before smartphones, before computers, typewriters, uh, even before the ballpoint pen. And, and yes, uh, Young people, there was life before that. And there was other means of writing. There was a fountain pen, which maybe lost some of you right there. I don't know, but a lot of you know what the fountain pen was. And it was quite an invention, but there were times when I was using it that I wished it had never been invented. It had a habit of sometimes dropping a big old gob of ink on your paper and just ruling it. We'd, yes, it was before whiteout. And you couldn't have used whiteout on that anyway. But what I'm saying this is, back in uh, years ago, I read for monks, when the Bible was really, practically didn't exist, there was a copy here and there, and they had access to a copy that was kept under guard. They could go in and read it but they couldn't take it out. They couldn't copy it. So what did they do? They went in every day, read a little portion of the scripture, and memorized it, went out, wrote it down, until they had a copy of the entire Bible. How long do you suppose that took? I'm not talking about using a typewriter, I'm talking about using a feather with a stem on it, dipping it in ink, writing down, dipping it in ink, writing a couple of words, dipping it in ink, and if that ink fell on the page, they were very meticulous. It was done. Start a new page. Tear that one up. I've read where it takes approximately 72 hours to read the Bible through. That's study reading. Of course, nobody would want to try to do that. But the average reader, it takes about 72 hours to read through the scriptures. 
How long do you suppose they spent writing, trying to copy the whole Bible? Not 72 hours, maybe 72 weeks. Probably take me about 72 months, I don't know. But understand this. God was using them to preserve the word we have today. And every day when we should be reading our Bible, and I'm going to get around to that in just a little bit, but every day when we pick up our Bible, we should thank God. Thank God that we have His Word. Without our Bible, what would we know today about God? And by the way, this is a Bible. Am I going too fast? You know, <laughs> Yesterday I watched the Mountaineers. I thought they wasn't going to pull it off there for a long time. I'm not really all that much of a football fan. I do like to watch the Mountaineers. But Vince Lombardi took over the Green Bay Packers several years ago. <laughs> uh, they were having a hard time. They were losing games. They were making all kinds of statements. And Vince Lombardi said, today we're going to get back to the basics. He held up a football and he said, this is a football. A big old lineman in the back yelled, slow down, coach. You're going too fast. <laughs> I don't want to go too fast this morning, but I, I want you to understand that we're talking about the Word of God and, and how we as Christians need to know the Word of God and have a working, working knowledge of the Scripture. By that I mean... Read it, study it, and apply it. It's so important that we learn God's Word in order to apply it to our lives. For there are people out there that are trying to live in this world that have no idea why they're here. They never have heard about Jesus. They never have heard about loving one another. Oh, we Christians... Sometimes we, we think we're trying to live like we should, but we neglect the elements or the most important basic things about serving the Lord. We as Christians need to understand that we are the salt and light of this world. We're living in a dark world today. A dark world. A place where there is no light except through Jesus Christ in the Christian's life. Jesus said, you are the light. You are the salt of this earth. And that's a preservative. Salt is. Think about that. Uh, Chuck Colson. Several years ago, Chuck was put in prison because he was involved in the Watergate. He was uh, President Nixon's uh, top lawyer. And he went to prison. And in that prison he found Christ. He found Jesus. And his life was changed. After he came out of prison, he had a great ministry for the Lord. Prison ministry and ministry uh, out in the country. And he wrote a book, How Shall We Live? And he said in that book that Genesis 1.28 was a mandate for the Christians for the Christians now to have dominion and uh, uh, he said that the culture was our responsibility. You and me are responsible to keep the culture of uh, good moral values, family, marriage, and boy have we messed up as a church in keeping the culture. What a culture is out there today. And we as Christians need to understand without the Word of God that culture's not going to improve. But it's only through God's working in people's life and the only way they're going to hear about God's working in their life is not by reading their Bible because some of them don't even have a Bible. And you heard the old song, Dust on the Bible? I'm afraid in too many homes today there's dust on the Bible. There's dust on the Holy Word. People just 
don't take the time. I'm talking about Christians now. Now understand this. Talk about reading your Bible, and a lot of people today, they're busy. They're really busy. And then some of them say, I, I don't have time. Now listen to me this morning. Nobody has 25 hours in a day. We all have the same amount of time, but it's what we do at that time that counts. We have to make time to study God's Word. And oh, how much better life would be if some Christians took that advice to heart and began reading their Bible and applying it to their lives. I know we're busy, and some of you uh, probably have to get up and go to work pretty early. Uh, but maybe you ought to try getting up maybe if, if you're not doing this now. If the shoe fits, wear it. If it doesn't fit, you don't have to wear it this morning. But try this. Try getting up early in the morning. Getting up early in the morning and taking a few minutes, I don't know, a half hour, even 15 minutes will make a lot of difference in your day, believe me. There is a story about uh, a man happened to be a preacher and he had a ministerial meeting the next day and I don't know whether this is a true story or not or somebody made it up but anyway he had an early meeting and he slept for the last minute like many people do, jumped out of bed, stubbed his toe first thing, went in uh, cut himself when he was a uh, shaving, got in a real hurry, you know, he was let, running late, grabbed a cup of coffee and uh, burned his mouth, uh, jumped uh, into his clothes, run out to the car, forgot his briefcase, run back in and got his briefcase and got in that car and pushed a pedal to the metal. Well, you can imagine what happened. The blue light started flashing when he was going down the road and the cop pulled him over and the officer got out of the car and walked up to him and he said, Sir, you were speeding. He says, I know, I know, uh, everything's been going wrong, just write me out a ticket. Uh, nothing's went right this morning. And the officer looked at him and said, Yes, sir, I understand how you feel. I used to feel the same way before I got saved. I used to feel the same way before I got saved. Let me tell you, Starting out in God's Word will make a different attitude in your behavior all day long if you let it apply to you. You know, people have a habit of just sleeping as long as they can. Many people today jump out of bed and rush through getting ready. Some of them take time for a cup of coffee. Some of them don't. Some of them make the mistake, listen to me, make the mistake as instead of looking at their Bible, they turn on the TV and watch the news, all that killing and violence and, and, and everything out there that's bad news. That's about all you hear unless you're listening to a Christian station. There are a few of them out there. Or they pick up a newspaper, same thing. And by the time they get to work, they're so psyched up from hearing the news or, or reading about the news and all the violence and the killing and everything that's wrong. Somebody looks at them cross-eyed, they're ready to let them have what's for. I'm talking about Christians. Christians. Who don't have time or don't take time to read the Word of God and find out how they should live. We are to live for Christ. We are to be witnesses of the salt and light of this earth. And we are to have a love for one another. Amen. In this Bible, we find out how we are to live and how we are to treat one another. You may have a contrary boss. The answer's in here how you treat that person. You may have to be an employer and you have people under you that you just can't get along with. The answer's in here. The answer's in here for every situation that we'll ever come across in God's service. It's in here, like the old ragu spaghetti commercial. It's in there, brother. It's in there, sister. It's in there. It's in this Word that tells us how to live, how we shall live. 
tells us we're salt and light, that we are ambassadors for Christ, we are witnesses. God, this didn't uh, save us to sit. It saved us to get. Get into the world and be witnesses and ambassadors for Christ. And that includes on the job. You know, there's so many people, so many people fear that when they, if they come to Christ, he's going he's gonna to tell them they need to go to Africa and go back in the jungle there or someplace and be a missionary. Give up everything here on earth. That's, that happens very seldom compared to the number of Christians there are out there today that are Christians right where they were as far as work and living before they got saved. And that's primarily where God wants us to be. Christians out there in the world where we live, living our lives so that people can see something different. Like the old man that uh, was always joyful and optimistic. We need to be optimistic. And they need to wonder what's wrong with that father. What's wrong with that woman? She, she, she don't act right. Something wrong up here must be. Maybe they'll get around to asking you what's wrong, and that gives you an opportunity. And the Bible says, we're to be ready to give an answer to those who would question us about our faith. We as Christians need to understand that out there in the workplace, there are people, people who are hurting. Out there wherever we go, in the stores, uh, there are people who are hurting. We need to understand that our neighbors are hurting. Bless their hearts. You know, I've heard people get up and testify that they just love everybody. I heard somebody quote somebody the other day and said, loving the world is not a chore. The problem is the man next door. And that's for a lot of people who can't get along with their neighbors. And we as Christians need to have the attitude of an old farmer. He had a dog, and his dog went over on his neighbor. And his neighbor called the dog catcher and said, come and get this dog. He knew it was his neighbor's, but he was upset because the dog had trespassed on his property. So he called the dog catcher. Dog catcher come and got the dog, and he went over to his neighbor, and he said, well, he said, your dog was over on my property. I called the dog catcher. And if it happens, again, I'll do the same thing. The old farmer stood there a little bit and said, well, he said, your cow got out last week, broke through the fence, come over on me. I put the cow back over and fixed the fence. Now let me tell you, if it happens again, I'll do the same thing. That's Christianity working out there. That's Christianity in reality. That's the way we ought to apply God's word. And our life should be a witness to those around us that we love them in spite of their faults. And we treat them as people who Christ loves and died for. Oh, the world today is just so full of sin and sickness. We need to understand that we are just passing through. Everything is passing. Our life is passing. Believe me, our life is very short on this earth. And compared to eternity, there's not really any life here on earth. It's just a short time. Heard a preacher one time preaching a funeral. He talked about the tombstones and he said, here's the Date of birth, here's the date of death. And in between is a little dash. And that dash represents all of our life. So I would encourage you to have a systematic Bible study. To, if you're not doing it, begin reading your Bible and praying about what God would have, how, how God would have you to react to the cranky neighbor or the cranky boss or uh, the cranky employee and maybe you work public service 
And I feel for you if you're out there in the public today trying to, trying to live a Christian life. It's possible if you're saturated with the Word of God. But I'll tell you, anybody working with the public today has their work cut out for them. Now, I wouldn't want to stop the day without saying that there's anyone here that doesn't know Jesus as their Savior. Again, I, I really don't know y'all. There may be someone here who just needs to let Jesus come into their heart and save them. And I urge you, consider the alternative if you were to go out of here without Jesus and stand before God. There is a heaven to gain and a hell to show. Would you bow your heads with me? Father in heaven, we just ask this morning that your word would sink deep into our hearts. Father, there's just so much about your word that comforts us, guides us, uh, educates us, and helps us every day of our life. Father, may we all, may we all be more dedicated to study your word and learning from it and applying it to our lives so that we could live like you would have us to live. Just bless this church, Father. Bless the leaders of this church. Bless them as they search for a pastor and that you, Father, would just call the right person to come in to this church and in this community and be a blessing, a blessing to this church. Call a faithful person of God this morning. And Father, we just praise you and thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you will do in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen.